I'm Emily Hayes, a senior writer with Pink and Scrip. I'm here with Glenn Nedwin at Second Genome at the Biotech Showcase. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about your company. Um, can you touch on some of the historical aspects of development related to microbes and where your company fits in? Sure. So the microbiome is, I believe, probably the next paradigm shift in science. If you think about recombinant DNA in the 1980s, how it changed all of medicine and science. Before that, there was no recombinant proteins. Today, seven out of 10 drugs are biologics. And you can engineer a cell to make anything. That changed medicine and science. The next paradigm shift is gonna be the microbiome. It's uh, basically microbes live in us, on us, and around us. We can't avoid them. If you tried to sterilize your body, you would die. Uh, the microbes in us, it's about 100 trillion microbes in your gut, they're providing us with health and nutrition. And that understanding that and harnessing that for medicine and science, I think will have a bigger profound effect than recombinant DNA, because that involves not only humans, but animals, plants, and the environment. And so the whole development of this technology, I would say is about the last 10 years or so, with the ability to sequence genomes and sequence information so that you can isolate and understand what bacteria are correlated to what state in any given sample. So the way people analyze the microbiome is they would typically take a lot of samples and they'd ask the question, are there certain bacteria that are correlated to a sample and metadata in the sample? And usually the answer is yes, because bacteria are there because they eat substrates that you feed them, and they also make type of molecules that are related in the sample. So if you can correlate bacteria to metadata, you can isolate the bacteria and show that they have an effect. And this is the core of the microbiome analysis. And from that, you, if, if you're looking, talking about human therapeutics, you're isolating bacteria, which then can have an effect to either keep you healthy, or if they're causing you to be sick, then you try and inhibit what they do. And so where does your company fit in the overall landscape? So our company is focused on the ability to isolate and understand, let's say, the one bacteria out of the billions in a sample, isolate it, and then ask the question, what does that bacteria make that's either keeping you healthy or causing you to be sick? So we isolate the molecules the bacteria make. So we're not making the bacteria as the drug. We're not making a probiotic, we're, but we have the, the ability technologically using bioinformatics and machine learning and sequencing information to isolate the individual bacteria that are important and then isolate the molecules that they make and then use those molecules as a therapeutic. And so we have recently discovered 14 novel proteins made from bacteria in your gut that repair your barrier function in your intestine that are there normally to keep you healthy. And this would be important in many diseases that related to the gut, for example, inflammatory bowel disease, type 2 diabetes, kidney disease, and liver disease. Mm -hmm. And what is the status of development? So we have one uh, molecule that's going to go in the clinic this year. Uh, it's actually uh, a small molecule that shuts down inflammation receptor, important in IBD and liver disease. And then these other molecules we found that are directly from bacteria um, are lead compounds. And we hope to get one in the clinic by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And what do you see as the biggest challenges in the space right now I mean, in terms of regulation, commercial? Um... So I think the first big challenge is to identify the specific strains of bacteria. So we all have you know, a lot of bacteria in us. You and I have some of the same bacteria, but mostly they're different. And so it's the ability to identify individual bacteria that are important for any given state. When you take a probiotic, if you, if you do, they're very strain specific. So not all the same genus and species names would have the same effect. It's very individual. So the ability to identify individual specific bacteria is very critical to this technology. And that's part of the uh, technological abilities that we have in our company. And can you talk a little bit more about the top indications that you think you might be pursuing with this? So anything related to gastrointestinal is probably the key first ones, uh, mainly because your gut is where most of the bacteria are in your body. I mean, they're clearly on your skin and your face and your hair and your, and your mouth. But I would say 95% of the bacteria that are you know, in a relationship with you in a symbiotic relationship are in your gut. And you have 70% of your immune system cells in your gut. Your essential nervous system is connected to your gut. So there's a lot of signaling going on that is there normally to keep you healthy. And that, I'd say, so gastrointestinal is the key number one spot. Related to that would be metabolic disease. So for example, liver, cancer, kidney things are all related to things in your gut. 
And then from there, I would go to immunology and cancer because, as I said, 70% of your immune system cells are in your gut. So there's a lot of um, crosstalk between your cells and the bacteria that you've evolved with over, you know, millions of years. And uh, can you talk about um, where you think the overall field of overall R&D is going in the future? I think... Not just your company. Sure, sure. I, I think the ability to understand how these microbes in, in your gut and my gut interact with each other and, and basically metabolize your food is, is the key to this in the future. So it would be more focused on, I'd say, health and wellness and nutrition. So how does diet, lifestyle, and wellness affect the different bacteria in your gut? And I think that's where the real beauty of this will be in the future. So when you have certain foods, you'll know how it affects you for your microbiome, which might be different from mine. And so I think the health and wellness is, is a future aspect of this, as opposed to just treating disease. And what are your goals in terms of financing and partnerships? So we recently raised the Series B with three new investors. We have uh, Pfizer, Roche, and SR1, which is a GlaxoSmithKline uh, investors, and Digitalis. So uh, three of those are the, uh, some of the top pharmaceutical companies, and they've come into our company because they've realized that we have core technology that can understand what the microbiome does and then make molecules from them as opposed to the whole bacteria. So we call our, I'd say, development pharmaceutical friendly because once we identify the protein, it's the same pathway as basically any other type of recombinant uh, protein or biologic. Um, we're looking for corporate partnerships in many areas because basically we've identified so many interesting new novel molecules as a small company we can't develop them all. So we're looking for partnerships in the areas of let's say gastrointestinal, metabolic disease, cancer, or even other areas like CNS, respiratory, or taken out of the pharmaceutical field uh, in areas like industry or ag. So we actually have one collaboration with Monsanto looking at new insecticides using our bioinformatics and machine learning. So the same way I might find bacteria that are important for our health, we can find some that kill insects. They're interested in killing insects. So the technology is broad and we're looking for partnerships in many different areas. And are there any observations you'd like to share about the biotech showcase so far, the JP Morgan meeting? It's just an intense uh, speed dating <laughs> with a lot of people, very fascinating, different interests of people, different technologies, and it's, uh, it's really uh, very energizing. Thank you, Glenn. Sure, thanks a lot.